The Minister of Works and Housing, Babasunde Fashala, who earlier said that Nigerian roads are not bad per se, has identified abuses by road users, insurgency among others, as some of the costs of the not-so-bad roads in the country. What are we supposed to believe in this case? And, and why is the minister not bringing solutions instead of pointing fingers? Well, joining me uh, once again is uh, Biodo Shomi, a political analyst, and Obi Ajewa, a legal practitioner. Mm -hmm. I'll start with you, Obi. The minister, former governor, who was an amazing governor, now minister of works and so many other feathers in his hat. Two weeks ago said the roads are not so bad as we make it seem. There is, because he we're flies. Crying because we're crying, you know, more than the bereaved. And then now he's saying that, well, the state of the roads is because of insurgency and abuse of the roads. Please help me explain if you have any idea what he said. Well, I must say there's, there, there are certain portions of the road you see that at night some people dig it up and then pretend that they're, during the day they pretend they are working and then ask for money. I've, I've seen that once or twice. But I would say that what he said is not the reality of the, of the case. Because these roads, how many years ago have they been built? How, many, how, how much rehabilitation has been done on them since? You can't build a road 30 years later with the amount of traffic we have in this country and expect the road not to have wear and tear and deteriorate. So now that the road has deteriorated, you, you cannot come and tell us we are responsible. You should, every road should be asphalted every six months or every year. Interesting. Uh, Piero, yeah. we have leaders because we want solutions. We need actions. We need to see plans put in motion because we want development. And we, I'm sure we don't want to keep being a third world country as they refer to us. But in this case, we see a lot of finger pointing, especially under this administration. What do you think is responsible for the finger pointing instead of the action that we all require? Yeah, I think um, you need to look at what um, was ascribed to Fashola through his Minister of State for, fin um, for Works um, at the Cross River State um, Conference. I think he's precisely referring to um, the haulage industry that the fact that they do overload their trucks and then that is damaging the roads, you know, putting so much pressure on the roads. Um, those are the people he's blaming. What um, he but forgot... He talks about insurgents, and I'm wondering... Yeah, he actually spoke about insurgency, and that's in relation to some roads in the northeast. He could the easily bridge. say, well, those ones, we have not been able to carry out repairs, you know, due to the activities of insurgency. But mm -hmm. then, that can only be true of northeast. That will not be true of South, South, South West or uh, South. North Central mm -hmm. or North West. So obviously. So you, 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 you need to look at exactly what he's saying. What is universal in all the excuses he gave is the issue of road haulage. You know, the heavy hassle trucks, you know, carrying so many. But what the minister forgot is that we used to have way in bridge, way bridge, you know, on the roads in the past. There is, used to be one near in um, Ikusiketu where they call toll gate, mm -hmm. one in Shagamo, I remember, just before the interchange on the right. So the question is what happened to them? We scrapped them. I think the first step is to you know, bring the way bridges back so that vehicles, heavy duty vehicle, vehicles, you know, do not carry more than allowed width, mm -hmm. not to damage the road. So there can that be a checking the, process. Absolutely. If you drive from Lagos, you know, to so once you leave Nigeria from Kutoni to Ghana, you will see exactly this. It's still operational in Ghana till today. There is no way you can drive through Ghana and you are a truck. You would have to stop at way bridges. They will have to wait to make sure you comply with the normal way. Now, we don't have that here. We don't need to tell the minister that. The minister knows this. So why are they not putting that in place in the first instance? The second aspect of the issue is not about blaming you know, those road users. You then ask yourself, whose responsibility is it to provide alternative for moving heavy goods? Is federal government the railway? Is federal government? So if we have destroyed, I'm not blaming the Buari's administration. Don't forget, we've had series of government. Now, when the federal government failed to construct, you know, railway to to, to have effective performing railway, 
people were forced, companies and individuals were forced to resort to you know, road outlet. So they were, it was forced on them. It wasn't by choice. If railway is working perfectly well, then that is a different thing. So the minister fails to address that as one of the major reasons which is leading to you know, this heavy moving of heavy goods you know, on road. But the Ministry of Transport one, will tell the, you that they have an effective rail system. No, but look, we all know the truth about this. I'm, I'm the sure they are just trying to, you know, reconstruct the railway line. We all know that uh, what we used to have is so outmoded, is so old, is not more functional. They're just bringing in the new standard gauge, which they are still busy constructing Lagos to Ibadan alone. So you can understand how long it will take us, you know, to complete the railway system. So that is another major issue. The last major issue is this: is about. Whose responsibility is it to oh. fix the roads? That is, even when you abandon or you fail to create means of moving everyday goods and they are being moved by roads, who is responsible for maintaining those roads? Are people not paying road tax? That is what we call vehicle license. Mm -hmm. They are paying it. Vehicle license is a form of tax to maintain the roads. So are they collecting it or not? If they are collecting it, what are you doing? Oh, you're money? not able to drive on the roads if you don't have that vehicle license. If you license. don't have vehicle license. So once you have paid your vehicle license, why is government, don't forget the FD trucks, they pay more money than car users. So what is government doing about that? You know, those big, are the major issues question. which I feel. Well, well let's go to a quick address. video um, of the minister speaking. And when we come back, I'll, be, I'll, I'll take your thoughts on it. Uh, let's roll that video that today my colleague in transportation announced some initiatives. Honorable uh, uh, Rotimi I won't steal his thunder except to say that we expect to benefit from those initiatives on some critical routes during the next few weeks that will bring relief to our, to our roads network as those train services yes. come on stream. So the, there is, I am positive that all of these problems will become history within a short time. But we must all understand what we are dealing with here. And to appeal to you that, yes, we are here to solve problems. Problems is headline news for you. But I think the balance is also to show that not all of the road is bad. Because the focus is on the bad part. But you owe Nigerians whose taxes we use to also show them that some work is going on. Because it's not all of Nigeria's roads that are, that are motorable. On the Bini Wari Road, for example, Many sections of it are motorable. It's a part that has caved in and collapsed. And that is where the pain is. And that is what we will respond to. Same thing on Lagos, Ibadan. Same thing on uh, so many parts of the road. And I think it's important to have that balance in order even to encourage people to have hope in the country. Because it's not as bad as sometimes we, we, we portray. That's your headline, we know. But it's important to let them know that on a 100-kilometer stretch, Maybe 10, 15 percent is bad because you actually drive to that point. He's trying to make a case about how bad or how good or not so bad the roads are. Obi, I, I want to take your thoughts on this issue. Um, federal government is too involved in 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 in, in all these things. They should release it. I will tell them free Nigerians. Let Nigerians run help them run this country. They are they In what ways? How do you mean? Railway concede this con concession and do it to give it concession to somebody that has sense so that if after if after six months there is no work you cancel it. It will be in the terms and condition. Roads do the roads know how to collect your money. Chikena, we have good roads, we the railway goods are moving at Bioga and then we are happy. Well I don't agree with that because mm -hmm. when you look at the private sector track record on roads in Nigeria it's not encouraging. In fact the best roads in Nigeria Is it possible to name names now? The, yes. The best roads in Nigeria are actually built by government, not even the private sector. Let me give you a good example. When Obasujo was in power, we remembered it was given to Julius Berger? No, not Julius Berger, Lagos Ibadan. Expressway Babalak. was given to Stabilini, to Stabil um, Stabilini, Stabilini yeah. Babalaki's company. Yes. Yeah. Mm. And then what happened? It was revoked. It was revoked because, look, these are highly capital intensive projects. There is no way, in some cases, you cannot even get the money from Nigerian banks. So you need to go to international financial market to get the money. Then you need collateral. 
and you need to be able to deliver these projects within a record time, and the revenue comes in in time to service that debt. This is a major problem. Look at uh, airports, for instance. We've done the airport concession. Cases are in court on it. So we've not been good in managing public private partnerships. What exactly are we good in managing? Because as we Look, speak, I'm, me, I'm, I'm, yes, I'm the, unable the, the, to see the, what we're we, the we government, uh, when we are doing our, to when we are company. doing our concession, look, look. we do it on man no man. Let us do concession based on meritocracy. Let us be do concession you, based look, on. Who, let me give who you a good it. example. Another example. Mm -hmm. Look at the Lekki as this road. You know, the the access to Lekki. Mm -hmm. You know, f um, after the law school towards mm -hmm. uh, Lekki. Mm -hmm. What top. happened eventually? It was private sector led. What happened? The state government had to take it back, paying every amount of money. So the records we have does not support. So you know, the, the way forward? So in the a way few forward minutes, is we seconds. have a very efficient public service system. Which efficiency? Yes, I still believe so much in our public service. You know, they, 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 they can do good jobs. It's just really? like the Nigerian police force. Look, if they are determined to arrest the situation, they will do that. And we should so not dismiss Where can we help them find this determination? Service. Because well, that seems to be have, lacking. The problem we have is the political class. That is the major problem. It's not the civil servants, you know, in Ministry of Works. No, it's actually the political class. We have seen civil servants, you know, you know, maintaining roads. Most of those roads, you know, being maintained currently are being done by civil servants. So why don't we build up their capacity to be able to de deliver first class project? Always remember one thing. Many of these roads, poorly constructed roads, are done by private sector companies, but they are certified by some civil servant to say those roads are okay. After a year, the rain falls and the roads are bad. What have we done to even sanction those civil servants? So that once there is some certainty of um, sanction, all these habits will stop. People collecting money and signing off, you know, poorly constructed roads, you know, as good roads. These are the problem because we do not have certainty, uh, certainty of um, sanctions, and these practices continue. Can I, can I interrupt? Can I interrupt? Please go ahead. You first of all know that the budget for all these things are limited, and we have various major express roads that will connect us. If um, if you go, somebody was telling me she was in um, Oweri or Uma here, that the road, the, there's no way for you to have an accident because you've been avoiding bombs, bombs, trailing, moving the car like a snake. That is counterproductive. Why not get good people that will handle this thing, give them specifications and work to the specifications? The government just doesn't have that money. We don't have the money. And we should stop deceiving ourselves that the government or the civil services, because we have like about 100 major roads. And out of that 100 major roads, about 70 are in bad states. And we want, and, and that is hindering, it's hindering production, it's hindering our Greek, it's hindering, it's hindering people's um, uh, life, lifestyle. And then you're here telling me civil servants. What civil servants? Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate if you say this is the only country in the whole world that I've ever had a citizen admitting that an oil producing state, country, Eh? The number six uh, largest producer of oil does not have money to, 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 to construct roads. I was about so to ask, so what, what about is our health? state now what if we don't health? have money How for the we roads? Go to Why this are you talking like How? this, sir? Why are you How? talking like this? You saw the budget. You have seen what the but you have seen what the house has taken. Paris pursue housing, Paris pursue education, Paris pursue health, Paris pursue transportation. So what are you talking about? Look it, at it. Is that Look issue? at it. That is the issue. No, the issue no, is the issue you. is. Okay. Yes. You know Closing what? statements you know what? because you know we have to let, let me quickly remind you of one thing. Mm. When Nigerians talk like this, they need to think about solutions. We and what used, are these we solutions? We had Orosaway's report, which identified over 200, you know, uh, uh, MDO, ministries, agencies, and other MDA, yeah. you know, that needs to be matched. They are duplications of functions, that they are consuming so much public wealth. But politicians are refusing to mark them because they are treating them as quangos, you know, job for the boys, to wasting public resources. So what we need to do is to first match all these um, quangos, you know, match them together, reduce the cost of governance by 50% so that we have money to invest in development. We also and, need and, to and consider and how, restructuring and, the country. And how soon do you think any politician we, in we this country is going to accept <laughs> We to can do, do that, that by restructuring the country. The 
the pressure for When you say tourism, we, who's we? In this I'm case? saying the, the country, the people. <laughs> Look, we have to make keep pushing for restructuring the country. The situation currently is that federal government collects 52.68%. Of all federal uh, of all revenue allocation, you have a state not collecting. Most of the states are not collecting 13 percent derivation, and they collect only 0.72 percent, less than one less than one percent. When you have the resources heavily concentrated, you know, at the federal level, and they consequently unable to maintain the roads, and the roads, the people are blaming their governors, you know, for bad roads. Then it is time to actually devolve those responsibilities to the state. Okay. So except we, we need with to go. the structure, I cannot can see I, can I, the can I, We can need I, to go. Can I, I, one sentence. We need one to go. Sentence. We need to go right now. Um, uh, I, don't, I don't believe in la-la-la. I don't believe in dreaming. Anything besides the federal government stepping back and handing this country over to tested private sector people on the base of concession. Not, not um, Mr. ABC is my brother. No. Do get a consultant to get tested people and okay. then consent, give these things out. We will still be, we still have this conversation next year. All right, well, it's been a very heated one. Uh, the last minute, Obi Ajegbop, uh, legal practitioner, and Biodo Show, me political analyst. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll it's keep our pleasure. fingers crossed and see how far we can push the government <laughs> to start doing something. Thank you for staying with us. Well, up next uh, is our take or my take <laughs> after the plus report. Stay with us. The House of Representatives has charged ministries, departments and agencies, also known as MDAs, to recruit more youth into their agencies. The motion was sponsored by Gudaji Kazaru from Jigawa State, who urged the federal government to fulfill its promise made to Nigerians on job creation. Kazaru said more job opportunities will reduce crime and youth restiveness. The current situation of unemployment rate in the country is very high considered to Consider with more than 3 million people applied for the recruitment exercise. And one of the top agenda of Mr. President is to eradicate unemployment as promised during our campaign. Also concerns the most important project is to employ people because the major problem facing this country today is due to unemployment. Resolve urge the House and the Budget and National Planning Office to reduce some capital projects and unnecessary expenditure in order to make sure the initial 10,000 approved recruitment is implemented. Job creation is one of the paramount uh, works for any government. And taking 10,000 people off the street will definitely help us, Mr. Speaker. It will help in controlling insecurity. It will help. And Mr. Speaker, if, if you look at 10,000 people, each person probably has four people that he's taking care of. So it is not 10,000 people you are taking off the streets. It's more like 40,000 people you are taking out of the street or more. So this is a very, very important motion, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we were also promised millions of employment per annum. Mr. Speaker, I do not know to what extent we have gone in accomplishing that. So the challenge we have is quite, uh, is quite, uh, has been well pointed out by Kazaure. He said, what type of planning is that? That was Kazaure's major question. What type of planning is that? If an economy is being planned in a way that it can't gainfully engage Nigerians, there is a problem. I think once, once, we, once we plug certain holes, the issue of recruitment, it doesn't mean that we're not going to recruit anymore. But what we're saying is that we'll plug the leakages and holes that are present and then do the real proper recruitment. And at the same time, even when you increase your capital expenditure, you are opening the doors for employment. Yeah, so I, I think employment and increase of capital expenditure can be done contemporarily. But it's a very delicate balance, and I, and I quite agree with that. Very, very delicate balance. It's time for my take.
Now, several retirees are dropping dead on endless lines waiting to get their pensions. Some have none because there is no hope as to when they'll get paid yet. Some governors have already settled themselves for life with taxpayers' monies. What about those who dedicated 30 to 35 years of their lives to service of this nation? Where is their pension? Yet you, who sat there for just four to eight years, is amassing wealth to yourself and your family at the expense of the masses. Whatever happened to service and leadership by example instead of just trying to get your own chunk of the national cake? Who are you serving, us or yourselves? And now the Minister for, Trans uh, for um, Works is blaming road users for the bad state of roads. What else is new? What stories are we going to hear next? I mean, Mr. Minister, let the job for which you were appointed be done. And do less talking. We need to see you act more. I'm Mary Anacon, and it's been Plus Politics. Have a great day.